Ursus Arctus Horribilis. This is the grizzly bear, okay? And uh, very, very fun hunt. Uh, their meat is anchovy flavored because of the number of fish they eat. But I, I will say that it, the, the meat's actually very, very good. But uh, on this particular shot, and I told this story at the, uh, the Dunadelsman's Club. <clears throat> the bear was actually uh, chasing a sow. Finally, she got discouraged and she took off. And, and she's heard me say this before. His approach was, well, if I can't get fed, I might as well get laid. So, <laughs> you know, so he went ahead. Uh, we were calling like a, a wounded moose calf. <clears throat> so he turned and started coming toward us. And he was probably about, at that time, he was 40 yards away. And he started coming. I said, I'm going to shoot at 30. And the guy is right beside me here, Eric Umpenauer. And I, he said, okay, fine. He's got a Remington, he's got a Remington 416, which is an elephant gun. And I hear, click. That's the safety going off. And I thought, the muzzle's right by my head. And I thought, oh, my word, are you kidding me? This is going to happen one way or another. When the bear got the 31 yards, I drew my bow. And you have to understand, a big stud muffin grizzly bear is all front shoulders. I mean, they're digging up squirrels with it, they kill moose with it, they'll kill a 3,000 pound walrus, and it's all upper bodies right here. When they get that big, they're so muscular, they're so muscle bound, what they do is it, it turns them pigeon toed. Their claws start to turn in, and when they walk, every, every step is almost like an effort for them. They, they, they grunt. <clears throat> I mean, he's 30 yards away. We can hear him grunting. We can hear every step he's taking, he's grunting. I thought, holy smokes. I paid to get myself in this situation. <laughs> when I drew it 31 yards, he picks up his head, and he's looking at me now. Now he's got something out there sounding like a moose calf. And he's probably thinking, well, that must be the moose calf. But funny shape. I'm at full draw, and when he stepped to 30, I shot. And the arrow hit him right there. Okay, just like almost like the polar bear shot. The arrow hit him right there and went into because of the angle. It went all the way down through his body, and it, it you know it, it was anchored, anchored well into his body, but the very end of it was still sticking out. He broke it off, okay, and turned around and run away. And the guide stands up and he says, "I don't think that'll kill him. I don't think that'll kill him." I said, "Don't shoot! Don't shoot!" Because if it's got a bullet hole in it, it's not a legitimate archery kill. So he lets it go into the alders. I said, "Okay." We go up and we pick up what's left of the arrow, we stick it in the grass, I said, we retreat. So we back up, we go eat lunch, we hop, to, we, uh, we're down by the ocean. We hop in a boat, we go out into the ocean about a half a mile with our binoculars, and we're looking up on the land to see if we can see him anywhere, and we don't. And I'm thinking, that's good. If we saw him, that, we'd probably see him moving. And if he's moving, that means the arrow hasn't killed him. I thought, okay, we don't see him, I think that's a good thing. So we waited about three hours just in case we have to let the arrow do a little bit of cutting, maybe, you know, you know, kill him. And after three hours, you know, I've got a, he gave me his 44, I got a 44 on my hip, and he's got his 416, and we go tracking. And we're coming in from a different direction. We can see the arrow about 100 yards ahead of us stuck in the grass. And he says, well, there's blood right here. There's blood over there. There's blood. Over there. there he is right there. And he goes running up to it with his 416. And I'm saying, Eric, Eric, stop. If the bear's not dead and it gets up to take a swat at him, he'd have to shoot it with a gun, and then I don't have an archery killed bear. Well, luckily, the bear, the bear was already starting to stiffen up. That arrow had sliced everything in here. It cut the carotid, the juggler, or whatever you want to call it. And I mean, the blood trail looked like it, somebody poured a, gallon, uh, poured a bucket of blood on the ground. He had expired within 30 seconds of the arrow hitting him, luckily. So, you know, there was a lot of hooting and hollering, high-fiving, congratulations, and then we skinned him out, did a small video, and that was my grizzly bear. Wow. Eureka, California uh, has a small uh, old Air Force base, and about an hour east there, you can hunt an animal called a Columbiana blacktail. A Columbiana blacktail deer is this bad boy right here. Okay? They love black oak. I think I mentioned at the uh, meeting the other night, you know, what you do is you walk around looking for black oak limbs that have broken off recently and fallen down, and if the deer haven't found it yet, that's where you want to sit, because they're going to come in and they're going to eat or forage on all the leaves. And uh, we found a limb, I set up, and uh, I never got a shot at a mature buck, um, and my five-day hunt ended. Camp, uh, that was the last hunt of the season, and they were going to take two days to break down the camp. I said, do you mind if I hunt while you guys are breaking camp? They said, no, go ahead. So I actually got to hunt an extra day. I killed this guy, 
the day after my hunt had legally ended. Um, I wasn't in a tree, I wasn't hunting over black oak, I saw the deer moving through the woods and I moved on an intercept path, got within 40 yards and then took him with one arrow. Okay. Hemononis, this is a mule deer. Okay, they are one of the, they are probably the largest species of deer in my opinion. This was taken in the Sonora Desert of Mexico, okay, uh, down near um, Hermosillo, Hermosillo, Mexico. Uh, it, was a, it was a one day hunt, it was done rather quickly. Um, this is a, this is just a very nice, what we, they call it a three by three, three points on a side. Some people call it a three by three with eye guards. Back east, this would be called an eight point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just semantics, that's all it is, okay? But uh, very, very good eating, a very good eating animal. Cow's deer, or the coos deer. Okay, this is actually a very, very big coos or cow's deer. It's interesting because when you compare it to this, it looks like, you know, it looks dinky. Yeah. But for a cow's deer, this is, this is a very, very high record book deer, okay? These are the ones that are so spooky because mountain lions live, there's a lot of mountain lions where these deer live. They're extremely wired. They're a very, very nervous deer. I went to clip a release on a string and, uh, and a deer 28 yards away heard it. I mean, I can't hear it from one foot away and he heard it from 28 yards and turned around and ran away. At any rate, we found out that there's a type of tree down there called a Palo Santo tree, which has big white flowers and they're full of sap or a real sweet honey-like sticky, sticky stuff. And what would happen is we were hunting these deer during the rut. Well, the does were going around eating all the flower petals that fell on the ground and the bucks were following the girls hoping to get lucky. So we just hunted Palo Santo trees instead of hunting over the water hole because a deer as it approaches water is extremely nervous. It knows that the predators are gonna stay near water hoping to pick them off as they go near water. They're on high alert near water, but they weren't on high alert near the Palo Santo trees. And as a result, this guy came in chasing a girl and the, obviously the doe left alone because I, I went ahead and took him with an arrow, okay? The animal was actually taken in 2005. This is the wood bison. This is the one I told you, they hate people. The year before I went to hunt uh, wood bison, a hunter was killed by one of these, okay? They don't like people. I actually did this hunt with Bill Cass, huh. okay? Now, this particular hunt, um, this animal is not included in the Super Slam, but there's no way it shouldn't be included. It's a, it's a 10 foot long, 2,500 pound animal, but they consider it to be a varmint. And it's some legal thing to do with the tags and licenses and whatnot. But this should be, this should be part of the Super Slam. They're a majestic animal. They're absolutely enormous. You know, um, they rely strictly on brute strength. Uh, the snow is two, three feet deep in northern Alberta in the dead of winter. And what a bison will do is they'll actually go into two or three feet of snow and they'll use their head as a plow. They'll take their head and they'll just go like this, all the way down to the ground so mm -hmm. until they can unearth some grass and they'll paw the rest of the snow away and they'll eat the grass, okay? But you should see their neck muscles. You know, trying to move two or three feet of snow builds their neck muscles incredibly large. So that, that's the wood bison. Day after I shot him, he came to feed on the gut pile, okay? This is Ursus Americana. This is the, the American black bear. This is a record book black bear, okay? But compared to a grizz or a brown or a polar bear, I mean, it looks small. And yet this guy could kill you. I mean, more, more people are killed by black bears every year than the other three species combined. But the reason why is because they tend to cohabitate with us. The other bears are very remote, live in very remote areas. This bear lives amongst us. I, we've, we've, we've filmed <coughs> bears on Trask Road numerous times. Okay, I've had bears I, on my I, property 500 yards away. And, my, and the one I saw was a seven footer. It's a big bear for around here. So this was a black bear. This was killed uh, eating his gut pile on the, way to, on the way to that bear's gut pile. Okay. Orianos Americana, after doing four sheep hunts, you know, you're anywhere from 5,000 to 13,000 feet on every day, day after day after day. And right now I'm, I'm 220, maybe 225 pounds. By the time I got done doing four sheep hunts and the mountain goat hunt, I was 193. My gosh. Okay, I was 32 pounds lighter than I am right now. And I mean, I'm not overweight, but I dropped 32 pounds. That's how difficult alpine hunting is. 
Um, we got him on the... And this uh, was all part of that six-month time period? This uh, was part of that? This was, uh, well, it was about eight. This was about okay. two months after I'd done yeah. the six-month time. Wow. But I'd slept, I slept on the mountain for 63 out of 65 days. And uh, I got him on the, on, the, uh, on the first day of the hunt. Um, and everybody told me that the meat was not good, and they're wrong. We, we made the mistake of listening <laughs> to everybody. We, we ground most of it up into hamburger and hot dogs. And the, the hot dogs are great, but I kept a few steaks, and the steaks were delicious as long as you've got the right equipment. Would you go grab, mm -hmm. the, uh, grab the Denny? And uh, very, very fun hunt dog. That was October 1st of 2008, which is the Sitka Blacktail. And uh, they, this particular animal, I flew to Ketchikan, caught a ferry over to Prince of Wales Island, and uh, we called him in. And again, you're taking advantage of their willingness to breed during the rut. What you do is you take a, almost like a blade of grass or a rubber band and you blow on it, and it makes kind of a shrill sound, which sounds like a fawn bleat in distress. A fawn in distress, and the does come in, boy, and they come in with their hackles up, ready to fight, because they think that something's trying to hurt one of their, one of their young. Well. If the girls are coming with a little bit of an attitude, you know the boyfriend's going to come along and see what's going on. And he came in with two does, and when he came in, I, I took him with a bow and arrow. Okay? If you'll notice, his horns look a little more honey brownish mm -hmm. than, than the other antlers, which tend to be a little bit whiter, because they, when they are in velvet and they want to rub the velvet off because it starts to itch, uh, as they're rubbing the velvet off, they rub it off on a tree called the Sitka Alder. Which is a which when once you get past the bark, the pith and the cambium of the tree is kind of a honey orangish color, and it imparts that color on their antlers. And it, it's a but it's a beautiful color. These two animals are the same species, Rangifer tyrandus. These are the central barren ground. Put you on the spot, Randy. But I, I just want to I'm going to ask you kind of a kind of a trick question here. One of these animals is easy record book. One of these animals isn't even close to the record book. And yet, to me, they both look rather impressive. Which one do you think is record book? Which one do you think is not record book? I'm guessing, Jake, that you wouldn't have saved this if it wasn't record book. Okay. <laughs> this one right here is in velvet still. Okay? Right. Yeah, the antlers look much larger, much more massive than this one. Yeah. Okay, so when I put my stock on them and killed them, I thought, yes! Here's the problem. When you get up to this particular animal, this is called, um, this right here, this, this, this part here is called a shovel. This, everybody in North America pronounces this a bez point, B-E-Z, but it's French. It should be pronounced bay. But for, to, to be consistent, we'll go ahead and call it a bez point, but it's really a bay point. So shovels, bez points, this is the main beam. This is called the tops. These are the tops of the animal. Some animals will have what's called back scratchers, like that one has back scratchers. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, I'm looking at this one, and I'm thinking, wow, he's got good mass. Even though he's in velvet, he's a little bit fuzzy. He's got good mass, <coughs> got great bay or bez points, got a good shovel, and great looking tops. That's a record book animal. So I shot him. Here's the rub. You're right. This animal does not make record book. Huh? This animal does not make the record book because this doesn't count as a shovel because it comes off of the shaft of the bez point. It's got to come off of the main beam. See, this shovel comes off the main beam, but this shovel comes off of the bez. Yeah, doesn't yeah. Count, it doesn't count as a point. This is invisible to the scoring method. Oh. So all I had were bez points and tops, and the animal was 20 inches from record book. But this one not only has shovels, it's got two of them. Yeah. And just... don't, don't worry about that. And, and both of them both of them are off of the, off main, the beam. main beam. So that makes the book by 20 inches. This one misses the book by 20 inches. Oh. And if I had known, you're right, I would have had the head done on this one instead of this one. Oh my gosh. And when the results came back, I was, I was just dumbfounded because I didn't know about this rule, about this, you know, this is one of those live and learn types of things.